Hi, how's it going? This video is going to be on what is serotonin. And while I answer this question, I'm also going to answer how SSRIs work and how psilocybin helps in depression. All these ideas stem from a paper titled Serotonin and Brain Function, A Tale of Two Receptors. And then I'm stealing some of the ideas and phrasings from two different people whose blogs I'll put in the description. So back to the initial question, what is serotonin? If you're like most people, you probably associate serotonin with happiness. Pop psychology considers dopamine the reward chemical, and then serotonin is the happiness chemical, and norepinephrine doesn't really have its one word cute association yet. Maybe it's something like the get in the zone chemical, or the alertness chemical, or the get hyped chemical. I'm not really sure. But in reality, things are infinitely more complex than this. I mean, neurotransmitters are involved in the cognition, emotion, and motor control of probably the most complex thing in the entire universe. You can't just do that with the variables of happiness, reward, and alertness. In another video of mine, I explained a more complex model of dopamine as the mediator of salience, but even that's a gross oversimplification. But I think it's a lot more quote-unquote accurate than dopamine is reward. So I hope to do the same thing with serotonin in this video. So with serotonin, it's obviously a lot more complicated than just being all about happiness. But it can be confusing in the fact that the drugs that affect the serotonergic system have wildly different effects. So looking at just some of the drugs that act on the serotonergic system, we know there are psychedelics and then the antidepressants like SSRIs and MAOIs. So how is it possible that the SSRIs and the psychedelics are both acting on the same system when it should be pretty clear that they have wildly different effects. So the first important thing to know to understand this is that serotonin actually acts on a ton of different receptors. There are charts that explain all the different serotonin receptors, but I think it's a better use of your time to slam your head against the wall than to memorize these charts. You'll see different charts say wildly different things, and then sometimes you'll see one receptor have a list of things that it's really hard to make sense out of how they're all related, Looking at these things is more confusing than it is revealing. But there's one paper that actually makes sense of this, and it's called Serotonin and Brain Function, A Tale of Two Receptors. So this paper cuts through the mystery of what serotonin is, but it only focuses on two receptors, 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A. And from here on, I'm going to talk as if what I'm saying is just a fact, but keep in mind that this is just a model of how serotonin works, and it's a hypothesis. But let's just get started. So I'm going to start out by overloading you with a summary of what's going on. And then as the video goes on, I'm going to make more and more sense of it. So the principal function of serotonin is to enhance adaptive responses to adverse conditions via two distinct pathways. The first pathway is a passive coping pathway, and that improves stress tolerability. And the second pathway is an active coping pathway associated with increased plasticity which can improve a person's ability to identify and overcome a source of stress by changing their outlook or behavior. The first pathway is mediated by the 5-HT1A receptor, and the second pathway is mediated by the 5-HT2A receptor. All right, deep breath. Let's make sense of what the hell that means. All right, let's start with an easy story. So imagine that you just graduated school and you took your first job and how it works for your career, like most careers, is that you really need to grind for the first few years to establish yourself before you can make any sort of good money or get assigned to work that made you choose the profession in the first place. Paying your dues, as they say in the business. But the problem is that the job is so stressful and it's only the second month and you know you have to do this for at least two years before there's going to be any sort of change. And your boss is always on top of you and giving you a hard time and the work isn't fulfilling and you're working crazy long hours. So the stress builds and builds and the stress gets so bad that you're not taking care of yourself and you're not exercising like you used to and you're not eating healthy like you used to and you're irritable all the time and you don't find pleasure in life. You've become depressed, as we say in the business. So this is what we call an adverse condition. And when you experience this level of adversity, if you want to avoid getting depressed, there's two pathways out that you can take. Pathway one is passively coping with the situation, and pathway two is actively coping with the situation. So pathway one, which is passive coping, is tolerating but not necessarily dealing with the source of the psychological pain. Whereas pathway two, which is active coping, 
is actively dealing with the source of the psychological pain by changing your relationship to it. Let's go a little bit slower. So passive coping is like being a stoic. It's having a stiff upper lip. It's waiting the problem out. So yeah, the job sucks for now and the boss sucks, but you shrug your shoulders and you go, what can I do? And you tolerate the work and you get through it. And if you're really tolerating something, then it doesn't really weigh you down as much. You're not as stressed and after work, you're still able to do the things that you like doing. So if you do a good job of passively coping, then you're tolerating the stress and after work, you're going out and you're having a fun time and it's not so bad. Now, active coping, on the other hand, would be actively dealing with the source of the psychological pain. So this would be taking action to change your environment or actively changing your behavior or actively changing your outlook to the situation. So there are a lot of different ways to actively cope with the situation. Maybe you find a way to stand up to your boss. Maybe you quit your job and move to California to live on a commune. Or maybe you just change the way that you approach the job. Like you have one of those office space epiphanies where you say to yourself, this job isn't important and the boss can tolerate me chilling or he can get rid of me. I don't care. All right. So now let's go back to what I initially said about serotonin to tie it all together. So the principal function of serotonin is to enhance adaptive responses to adverse conditions via two distinct pathways, the passive coping pathway that improves stress tolerability and the active coping pathway associated with identifying and overcoming the source of stress by changing outlook or behavior. So these two different pathways are mediated by two serotonin receptors, and that's the 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A receptors. So binding to the 5-HT1A receptor takes you down the passive coping pathway, and then binding to the 5-HT2A receptor takes you down the active coping pathway. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about the two different receptors, 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A. So let's start with 5-HT1A. So 5-HT1A is the most common serotonin receptor in the brain. And because it's the most common serotonin receptor in the brain, when SSRIs increase serotonin in the synapse, it's going to be the 5-HT1 receptor that most of the serotonin goes to. So because most of the serotonin is going to 5-HT1A, SSRIs main effect are going to be as 5-HT1A agonists. And we actually know that 5-HT1A receptors are mainly in the limbic system. And this is the system that's heavily associated with emotions and impulses. And then we know that there are some medications that bind directly to this receptor. Here I'm thinking like buspirone or bortioxetine or velazodone. All right, now as for the 5-HT2A receptors. So drugs that activate this receptor are the psychedelic drugs like LSD or psilocybin, which is the active molecule in shrooms. And we also know that some antipsychotics block this receptor, so they block the 5-HT2A receptor. So it shouldn't be too surprising that psychedelics make you look crazy, whereas antipsychotics can stop you from being crazy. But to summarize all that, the SSRIs can be thought of as stimulating the 5-HT1A receptor, and the psychedelics like psilocybin and LSD can be thought of as stimulating the 5-HT2A receptor. And we already know that SSRIs are primarily used to treat depression, but now we're seeing more and more research showing that psilocybin can offer therapeutic benefits for people with major depressive disorder. I should mention that it's still early research and there still needs to be more trials before it becomes a standard treatment option. <clears throat> the information provided here is for general entertainment purposes only. It's not intended for substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please never discard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because you have something you've seen on this platform. So, now I should take a second to tie all this together to explain, theoretically, how both the SSRIs and psilocybin can treat depression. So let me walk you through this nice little graphic from the paper. So if you increase the 5-HT1A receptor signaling in your brain, this is going to impact the limbic system. So it's the limbic system that's involved in emotion, memory, and arousal. So this will lead to less intense emotional responses. So by decreasing limbic responsivity, what we're doing is reducing stress, impulsivity, aggression, and anxiety. And by reducing these things, we're going to increase the ability to tolerate stress, which allows us to be more resilient and more patient. And this whole pathway leads us to being less depressed. So I'll get to the 2A receptor pathway in a second, but first let's talk about why it decreases impulsivity and anxiety. So with impulsivity, one of the most reliable behavioral effects of low serotonin is you increase impulsive and aggressive behavior. So we know that low levels of serotonin 
are associated with impulsivity, aggression, and suicidal behavior. So here the belief is that if you increase serotonin transmission, you increase the passive coping, and that enables a person to better tolerate delay. So in essence, you're more patient and thus less impulsive. So going back to our initial story of being crushed by your job, if you were taking SSRIs, you would be tolerating the stress better. And that would make you less likely to snap and just attack your boss out of nowhere. And then what about anxiety? So we know that the 5-HT1A receptor is densely expressed in the limbic regions, especially the hippocampus. So it decreases the hyperactivity in these stress circuits. So especially with mild or moderate stress, if you lower the levels of stress by lowering this hyperactivity, it's going to lower that anxiety. All right. Now let's move to the 5-HT2A receptor pathway. So the 2A receptor binding increases cortical entropy. So this is like grabbing your brain and shaking it in hopes that it settles into a state that's better able to deal with whatever's going on. So basically you're more open to crazy ideas or crazy behaviors that before your brain would have been like, we're not going to even consider that. So the functions that are reduced are rigid thinking and pessimism. And what's increased is cognitive flexibility. So you have increased plasticity and increased ability to learn and then also unlearn things that aren't helpful and an increase in adaptability and change. So think about how psychedelics work. They enhance cognitive flexibility. They promote creative thinking, you know, that outside the box type of thinking. So another way of summarizing all this is that the 1A receptor helps the person adapt and tolerate to being in a stressful environment. Whereas the 2A receptor leads to actions or changes in a belief system that help change the stressful environment. So it really represents two different approaches to a stressful environment. So let's walk through how this would work in a person experiencing adversity. So the person is in a stressful environment and the brain releases serotonin. And the serotonin starts by initially hitting the 5-HT1A receptors. And this allows the person to bear the stressor stoically. Hopefully they'll soldier on or the problem will go away, or something will naturally change. But let's say that this adversity happens for a really long time, and it's really bad, and then the serotonin passes some threshold, and now it starts acting on the 2A receptors. So the brain realizes that this thing is not going away. It needs to try higher risk strategies. So it increases the cortical entropy, which allows for new solutions. And then connecting this with the drugs we've been talking about, SSRIs work on the first pathway. So they're concerned with passive coping and passive endurance. Whereas psychedelic drugs like psilocybin and LSD act on the second pathway, which is referred to as active coping and is concerned with making an active change in outlook or behavior. So that captures most of it. But let's just talk about a few random things to help us make sense of everything. So maybe you're hearing this and you're thinking, we should all just maximize our 5-HT2A and start doing psilocybin or something that simulates the 5-HT2A receptor. So side effects and other problems aside, there's other reasons we don't always want to go down the active coping pathway. So we know that too much 5-HT2A stimulation can make you prone to some really wacky beliefs and can even make you psychotic. So on the good end of the active coping pathway, and by that I mean taking psychedelics, we've seen scientists make incredible breakthroughs or people have a new outlook on an old trauma. But on the bad end of the active coping pathway, We'll see people become evil hippies and start to develop kooky beliefs. And I've seen a bunch of cult documentaries where you see people start taking psychedelics all the time and they develop this completely bizarre belief system. If you haven't seen the Cult of Mother God documentary yet, I highly recommend it. And then to give a fair shake for the 5-HT1A receptors. So we know it promotes stoic coping with problems. So on the good end of this, we see people start an SSRI And then they're able to cope with their problems and they're able to get out of their depression and they're able to start doing the things that make their lives more happy. But then on the bad end of 5-HT1A stimulation is someone who would start an SSRI and experience a really bad degree of emotional blunting. You know, maybe they lose their mojo or their voo for life. I'm reminded of a supervisor who said he didn't start the patient on antidepressant because he felt like he should be depressed and that he felt like with this specific patient that his depressive symptoms were a good motivator for making changes in his life, and he didn't want to just remove that, which I think is an interesting approach. You know, people experience depression for reasons. We don't want to just remove those symptoms if they're appropriate and a motivating force. It's when those symptoms get so debilitating that the person can't find motivation to fix their problems, 
or the problems that they're experiencing they feel really stuck in, that's when it makes sense to use an SSRI. Hello, I am the creator of PsychoPharm. I'm here today to announce the PsychoPharm Antidepressant Psychopharmacology course. I've put what can only be described as a stupid amount of time into making this course. I learned a new software so that the graphics are nice and clean. Um, I've put all my free time into making these videos. I'm covering a lot in this course. It's going to go over kind of the basics of treating depression. It's going to go over the SSRIs, the SNRIs, the MAOIs, the TCAs, and some of the atypical antidepressants. I really appreciate all the support. If you can share this with people who you think would be interested in this course, I would really appreciate it. If this goes okay, then I can justify continuing to spend so much time on making this stuff, and I hope to eventually move to an antipsychotic course, a mood stabilizer course. Um, I have a lot of ideas, I just need to justify using all this time on these projects. Thank you for watching, thank you for considering, um, have a good day.